Saturday, August 24th. We're almost through the month of August, which is crazy. And Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, is joining us here in the Experts Program to do a little technology talk. Luis, welcome back. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I know. it's. I can't believe it's August, but you know, worse still, if you go to Costco, they already have the Halloween stuff out. Oh, geez. It's just crazy. <laughs> You know. Well, and next weekend is the county fair, and next weekend is Labor Day weekend. Yep, yep. So, and football starts in, in yeah. earnest. Uh, college football starts uh, actually this weekend. They have That's a right. game uh, in, uh, I think, in du- from Dublin, yes. Ireland. Yeah, that, week uh, zero. Is, yeah, so amazing. Yeah, and high school football starts next week, and college football this week, and full schedule next week, and then, of course, the NFL starts the second week of September. I think they're starting yep. on the, well, I think they start on the It'll, 8th, either the the 8th yeah, or the 15th. I believe it's the 8th is when the NFL starts. So it'll be fall before we know it. And it'll be the Jazz Festival before we know it. Yeah, so. Jazz Festival is uh, about uh, four weeks away and uh, Rancho Cielo is doing their Jazz at the Ranch event at the end of October that I'm intimately involved in. So lots of really good fun uh, events for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's great to have all these events but it's also sad how quickly the summer goes by. Yeah. You know. <laughs> that is so true. My favorite season. And you know, every season is not 90 days, a little over 90 days long because we have 365 Mm -hmm. days in a year. So each season is a quarter. So it's like 91 days, 92 days, something like that. But it always feels like summer is the fastest season of the four. Winter seems to be the longest. And winter is, that's all I was about to say. Winter seems to be the longest. Although what's interesting, this weekend up in the Sierras, they're predicting snow in the higher elevations. August snow in the Sierras hasn't happened in a couple decades. So uh, very weird weather. Yeah, the snowpack's good for the water supply, so Mm -hmm. I won't take it with a grain of salt. Hey, the story we want to talk about today on our chat is that Google has agreed to what is a first-in-the-nation deal to fund California newsrooms. Journalists are calling it a disaster. Now, originally, there was legislation proposed, and this is rare in California, because in our state, which the Democrats hold a overwhelming advantage over Republicans, I think it's like three to one in the state house, Mm -hmm. or even four to one in the state House. There's really no reason for the two parties to collaborate on bills. But this is an unusual bill where it was co-authored by both a Republican and a Democrat. And this thing was speeding its way to approval when Google preemptorily, along with some of their supporters, mainly from Silicon Valley and L.A., kind of torpedoed this legislation, as I understand it, Lewis, yep. with an yep. alternate proposal that splits the, the cost of funding news rooms between Google and the state of California, i.e. us taxpayers. What else do you know about this? Yeah, so the plan that Google and the governor, who's a supporter of this kind of settlement, if you will, that they came up with is uh, they agreed to $250 million over a five-year period where Google starts with $15 million the first year and then uh, the state invests $30 million and then subsequently it flips so that Google is contributing more than the state. The idea is that money will go to fund newsrooms, as we know a lot of um, newspapers in the state have shut down because of competition from digital media and a lot of people will claim that Google would not exist in the way that it does if it were not for the fact that it could get free access to a lot of that digital content that these newspapers post on their websites and uh, you know when the search engine uh, when you go online to look for stuff Google is benefiting from it because they get to you know charge the advertisers that don't really benefit the newspapers even though they're the ones that create are creating the content. So this is a way to actually repay those or at least compensate those news sources in a way that doesn't require legislation. The uh, California Journalism Preservation Act, which you talked about, now gets sidelined because this uh, agreement will supersede that. But a lot of the folks that actually produce the news feel like they were left out of those negotiations, like the reporters, the newsroom people, and that this deal was just done at the state level without any input from them. And I think the deal is, too, is, is as they look at it, that the money isn't enough to really restore the newsrooms. It's really a token amount because it's $250 million over five years. So it's essentially an average of $50 million a year. Yeah. And when you look at all of the newspapers in California, that's not very much money to spread among them. Now, obviously, how the money is going to be dispersed is, you know, that's the devil's in the details. But you've got situations where even the largest newspapers like the Mercury News, the Chronicle, the UT down in San Diego, the LA Times, 
Times, they're all going to want a, a piece of the action. And then you could even have smaller papers. They're obviously going to want their share as well. Now, you look at, there's something like 2,500 newspapers that have gone out of business across the nation in the last 20 years, primarily because of uh, what they say is the incursion of internet and basically this zero-sum game where what money would have gone into print has ended up going on to the digital platforms. But uh, you even have, um, and even though the papers haven't gone out of business, you have a lot of newspapers that are just barely hanging on. The Californian in Salinas is a perfect example. Yeah. At, at their heyday, they published six days a week. Now they're down to three days a week, and they're talking about not having a hard copy edition. The Monterey Herald still publishes seven days a week, but for a lot of people who live in certain areas, they no longer get home delivery because they might be the only person and somebody would have to drive 20 miles to deliver a newspaper to them. Yeah. And so they get the paper mailed to them. Well, you know, the problem is that um, that fundamentally belies, you know, what the business is supposed to be about because, and I remember learning this many years ago in journalism class, the first three letters of the word news are new. Yeah. And when it's not new, it's not necessarily news anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, it, I, 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 yeah, it's crazy that those of us that grew up in an era where we would get the, I would get the Weekend Chronicle and I'd get the Herald every day and I'd get the Californian every day because I wanted to know what was going on in my community. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of news that was new <laughs> in there. Right. And now when you get the paper, it's like, well, I've already seen that on social media. I've already seen it online or even on TV. So there's really no reason to get the local paper unless you really dig into the you know in-depth reporting. That's one of the reasons that I like about, even though they only publish once a week, the Monterey County Weekly and even the uh, Pinecone from Carmel, the stories in there are new and they are compelling and they are interesting. And you just don't get that from a lot of other news sources. And I don't think this deal with Google is going to restore that, unfortunately. No, no, it's, it's barely, because if it's something that Google can, for them, I think 250 million over five years is a drop in the bucket. That's uh, a rounding error. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's a rounding error when you look at what their revenues are. Now, I think what they were trying to do with this was they wanted to head this thing off at the pass because if it passed in California and became a law, it obviously could end up migrating to other states and then it would become a thing everywhere across the nation where Google would be on the hook in state after state after state for these kinds of payments. Now that still may happen, but they probably look at this like, well, if a bunch of states come after us, we can cut the same deal with them that we're cutting with California and it's more of the rounding error kind of thing because they probably yeah. figure $250 million over five years is the max because it's California and it's the biggest state. So you get down to much smaller states, like a state like Wyoming, what would it be, like a million dollars? Yeah, that they at might, most, yeah, you know? exactly. I'm sure that the people at Google, they kind of plotted this entire thing out. They teased it out and they crunched the numbers to what they feel that they can, you know, what they are willing to do. Now, that doesn't mean that at some point, and when we have a different governor in a couple of years, if this bill won't come back with a vengeance, and then things will get yeah, really and interesting. On, and, you know, the deal still is, the ink isn't dry, as they like to say, because a lot of uh, folks are not happy with it, with this agreement. So it may not uh, necessarily see the light of day unless they make some modifications and really get some input from the, the people that are actually impacted the most by this, and that's the people in the newsrooms. All right, we'll get the popcorn and get ready for the show. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. That's Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, joining us this Saturday morning here on Power Talk Radio. Online, it's AlvarezTG.com, at AlvarezTG. That is their X handle. Lewis, the toll-free number for the I-Team. Give us a call at 866-78-I-Team. That's 866-784-8326. And Lewis, looking ahead to Monday, driverless cars in San Francisco and Uber. Tell us about it. Yep. Yeah, next time uh, you're in San Francisco and you uh, call up your Uber app, you may get the option to get a driverless Uber instead of a driver Uber. So stay tuned and uh, tune in on Monday to learn more. All right. That all starts at 830 in the morning right here on Power Talk Radio. Thank you, Lewis, and have a great weekend. You too, my friend. Take care.